Today I'm in East London, more specifically Forest Gate. And this is, well, it's a block of flats, but it hasn't always been. It was built in 1854 as an industrial school. These were places where poor and homeless children, as well as those who had committed minor crimes, were sent by the courts in order to clean up their acts and get an education. They did basic school work, but also learned trades such as tailoring, gardening, knitting and cleaning. The Forest Gate School District, of which the Forest Gate Industrial School became a part in 1868, also operated a training ship called the Goliath, which was moored on the Thames. On this ship, boys as young as 12 would train for future careers in the Navy. But in 1875, disaster struck when one of the boys dropped a lamp, starting a fire that destroyed the entire ship. Around 600 people were evacuated, but 22 boys and their schoolmaster drowned. Two years later, the school began operating another ship called the Exmouth. Unfortunately, though, the incident on the Goliath wasn't the only deadly fire experienced by the Forest Gate Industrial School. On New Year's Eve 1889, some of the children were taken to see a pantomime at Stratford Theatre, which I believe is Theatre Royale Stratford just down the street, but can't be certain. Later that evening, after midnight on New Year's Day, the matron that slept in one of the dormitories awoke to the smell of smoke. A fire had broken out in the wardrobe room, which was on the bottom floor, below the two storeys that made up the dormitory in which more than 80 boys slept. She informed the school superintendent, who sent messages to the local fire station before using a fire extinguisher to try and put out some of the flames, but they continued to spread. Some of the boys began to wake up as the smoke entered their dormitory, but many went back to sleep, thinking that the fire had been put on to prepare food. Those who did try to escape, however, couldn't. The doors were locked from the outside, as they were every night, presumably to stop the children from running away or causing trouble. Some boys jumped from the windows, dragging their friends to safety with them. One boy is reported to have escaped and then gone back in to save his friend, but neither came back out. Others remained in bed and went back to sleep, never to awake again. Firefighters with steam-pumping fire engines eventually managed to extinguish the flames, and break down the doors to the dormitory. They managed to rescue most of the boys, but 26 of them perished. The youngest was 7, and the oldest was 12. It was later discovered that the fire had been caused by a defective pipe in the wardrobe room, which was sort of like a laundry room. Some soot in the pipe had escaped through a hole, setting fire to clothes that were nearby. The fire was so devastating that it led to the government urging local authorities to enforce stricter fire safety measures, including leaving doors unlocked at night. The school was eventually closed in 1906 and became an annex for the nearby Poplar Workhouse. In 1913, it became Forest Gate Sick Home, which was used to house people who were bedridden, mentally ill or had conditions like epilepsy. It later became known as Forest Gate Hospital and opened a maternity ward. But of course, the site being in East London, the industrial heart of the capital, meant it was a target for bombings during the Second World War. Many patients had to be moved to a hospital further out in Essex, and it's a good job they did that. The hospital suffered at least six direct hits by bombs from German air raids during a three-week period. Several hospital buildings were destroyed. By the time the war had ended, the hospital was primarily dealing with pregnant women, so arrangements were made to remove any non-maternity patients to other hospitals. And in 1974, it became known as Forest Gate Maternity Hospital, 
But in 1985, when a maternity department opened up at Newham General Hospital, this site was closed down. Much of the back of this main building was demolished, leaving pretty much just the facade. Other buildings were also demolished or destroyed during the war. Besides the main building, a couple of other buildings were also left on the site. This one is called The Lodge, and this one was the hospital's infirmary. After sitting in a state of disrepair for several years, what's left of the main hospital building was converted into flats, known as Gladys Dimson House. Gladys Dimson was a local Labour politician who was the chairman of housing management in what was then known as the Greater London Council. The former infirmary is also now residential accommodation, and the lodge is a community centre. The rest of the land was converted into what's now known as Forest Lane Park. <laughs> 